Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Today I have a very exciting new product to show and one that I've been asked about a million times. I'm happy to introduce to you the new Unify NAS Pro. The Unify NAS Pro is a 7 bay 2U NAS that might look familiar to you. It has the same design as the Unify UNVR Pro. The UNAS Pro has a 110 gigabit SMP Plus uplink and one 1 gigabit RJ45 uplink. For my deployment, I will be using four 8 terabyte Toshiba drives that Ubiquiti provided me along with the UNAS Pro. The application that runs on the UNAS is called Unify Drive and we will be diving deep into it in this video. The price for the UNAS Pro is $499 USD. Now let's jump right into the configuration of the UNAS Pro starting on our phone and then we'll move over to desktop. For the initial setup, I was using my phone. This is just a video that was recorded, but we could see that a new device was found and that is the Network Attached Storage Pro. So let's press play and then we'll go through the configuration. It's showing that we're connecting to the UNAS Pro and then it's gonna bring it up and it's gonna ask us for a name. All I put was UNAS Pro and then I just put Mac Telecom. Once we press next, this is our storage section and it's gonna tell us the different storage options that we have. And the storage options that I have, I only have four disk in here, is the basic protection with large storage space. So this is gonna enable us more space. If we want higher protection with limited storage, we could choose that. Right now I will have available 24 terabytes and then we'll have storage protection of eight terabyte and that works perfectly fine for me. After we select our storage, it just says setting up Unify OS and this will look for firmware updates if any are needed. After this, it's pretty much all done. And then we could access our UNAS Pro either by unify.ui.com or we could go direct to the IP. Now I'm over on our site manager and we could see the UNAS Pro Mac Telecom and this should look pretty familiar to you. We could see that we have our control plane and then the application that we have is Drive. Let's click on the drive and this should bring us over to the dashboard. And this is the new dashboard for Unified Drive. As like any other application dashboard, it is very clean and easy to navigate. In the top left hand corner, we could see our storage and then we could see the file services, which we'll go into a little bit later. But we have Mac, we have Windows, and then we have our time machine. We could also see our users and our active users. We only have one user on this right now, which is myself but we will create some other users. At the top, we have this tooltip. It says for optimal speed, mount drives on Mac OS or Windows using the SMB protocol. And then we could see this powerful backup system. So it says powerful data backup enables you to create multiple copies of critical files and store them across various destinations, offering limited list possibilities. Scrolling down below, we could see our throughput. I haven't actually sent any files to this, so there's not gonna be a lot of throughput right now. And then down below, we have all drives and snapshots, and we could see that it created a personal folder for me or a personal drive, so that's Cody McCallum. And then we have a shared drive example. We will create our own shared drive as well. I really like how this dashboard is laid out. It's very easy to navigate. If we go to powerful backup system and we wanna set it up, all we need to do is click this link. Same with snapshots. If we wanna create a snapshot for my user, we could just click to set up and that makes it very simplistic. Next, let's take a look at the all files. We could see that my personal drive was set up. So Cody's drive, and then we have that shared drive example. If we click on Cody's drive, we have the overview and it's showing us our usage. Obviously, I don't wanna give this user the full storage space as you can see right here, it's about 24 terabyte. So if we go over to our settings, we could enforce storage limit. I'm gonna say give them 500 gigabyte each and then we're gonna press save. Along with this user, we could look at our protections and we have our snapshot and we could set snapshot limits and we could say when we want to schedule them. So our schedule for me will be daily at 12 a.m. And we are gonna set that up right now. So we'll click apply. This task is gonna run every night at midnight and it will have a limit of 128 snapshots. And you can see that it will automatically delete the oldest unlock snapshot to remain in the specific limit. Now clicking over on our shared drive, it's pretty much the exact same. We could do our snapshot limits. I'm gonna set this up to be 256 and then we're gonna press apply and then we could set a different limit for enforced storage. I'm not gonna to wanna to give them everything, but we'll say we're gonna give them one terabyte. Currently, all of the admins have access to this shared folder, but when we create some new users, we'll also give them access to this as well, kind of as like a staff shared folder. Before we go ahead and create a shared folder for our staff, we're gonna add two different users. We're gonna go over to users and then press the plus icon. 
From here, we're gonna name two users. It will just be user one and user two. But for this personal drive, we're gonna limit them to only be able to use one terabyte and then we'll press save and then create. Again, we're gonna create another new user and we're gonna call this one user two. This time I'm gonna put an email. So I have a, just a generic Gmail address and we'll put that in right now. And then we're gonna give them that same limit of one terabyte. Now we can see both of the users are still pending. What we need to do, we need to click on user one, go over to our settings, and then we need to do this file services credentials. This allows users to sign in via SMB connections and drives local IP, so we'll check this off. For this, we need to put in a username and a password. The username will be user1, and the password for both will just be test123456789, and then we're going to apply the changes. We're not going to give them any access to shared drives at this moment. Now that we have a few users created, we could see all of our personal drives in that shared drive example. Let's go ahead and we could add a shared drive. I'm going to call this employee and we're going to enforce the size limit. We'll do it of 10 terabyte. And now we could select what user could see this. So we have all admins, but then we're going to add a couple other users. So that user one and the user two. By doing this, we could press add and all of our users will have access to the shared drive. So now how do we actually access it as our user? Well, we could either do it by direct IP or we could do a map drive to our Windows or we could do it over to our Mac. I'll just be showing you on Windows. To access Unified Drive, we could go over to our services and then go to the web access. You would see here that it's this address slash Unified Drive. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna open up a new tab. Now we have sign in to Unified Drive. You could enter your email address or your username. So we have the console admin, sign in with your UI account or file service credentials, or we have the other, which is sign in with the username provided to you by a console admin. So we're gonna do this user one. Our password again was test 12345678. And then we're going to sign in. One thing that I think needs to be updated with this is the ability to force a password reset by the users. We will give them a temporary password, but when they do their first sign in, they should have to create their own password. But right on this dashboard, we could see that we have our users drive. So our personal drive, and then we have our employee shared folder, which we could drag and drop files in here, or we could create new folders or we could upload a file or upload a folder. A couple things in the settings for this user, we have our shared links, which we'll take a look at in a minute. We have our services, so we have our web access as well as our SMB. And then we have our user profile where we could upload a portrait, we could change our name and email, we could reset our password, we could see our drive storage, and then we could sign out. For user two, we're gonna do it in the simplest way, and that is by using UID. Since we have the user's email, all we need to do is press invite. So we'll click on the user two and you could see identity invite on October 17th. I'm just gonna invite myself again and this will push out an email to this email account below. A pop-up shows up and it says invite users to join Unify Identity. Send an invitation link to the user. This helps them download and set up Unify Identity mobile and desktop apps and access all the powerful features at their fingertips and we're gonna press send. Now we see an email from Unify Identity. It says, hi user, you have been invited to access Unify Identity resources on UNAS Pro Mac Telecom. Right here, we're gonna to click to install the endpoint. There's two different ways that we could do this. We could set it up on our computer or we could set it up on our phone. I'm gonna be setting it up on this Windows machine. So we're gonna click download Unify Identity endpoint manually. Now you can see that that downloaded, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up that download. We're gonna to agree to the end user license agreement and then press install. With identity installed, we're gonna press get started and then we need to load in our credentials. We're gonna open up identity. Now we can see in the bottom right hand corner, user two UNAS Pro Mac Telecom, your unified drive and we're just gonna click on the arrow. Clicking on the arrow redirects us to our Unify cloud portal. And you can see here that we have the user's drive, which is our personal drive, and we also have that employee shared drive. So this really is the easiest way to go about adding users. We don't need to create a username for them or a password. We just need to enter their email and then send the Unify identity invite out. Now let's map a network drive to our Windows machine. We could see the address for the Windows. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it and then open up File Explorer. From File Explorer, we're gonna go to Network, right click, and then we're gonna map a network drive. We're gonna paste that address in, and then I'm gonna do forward slash, and then which share I want to be able to mount to my windows. So it's gonna be the employee. 
I'm going to click finish and then we should be asked to put in our credentials. Now it's saying, what credentials do you want to use for your username and password? This one will be my Mac Telecom. And now you can see that that is mapped and it's on my Y drive. And we have one video put in there, which is a Jamaica trip that Chantel and I went on to. If we want to move other files into here, it's just as easy as dragging and dropping. So I'm going to go ahead and grab another MP4 video file from our Sarasota trip and drag and drop it in. And you'll see that copying over to our NAS. Currently, this computer is only on a one gigabit connection. Now let's take a look at shared links, which we could share either internally or externally, and we could put different permissions on it. So if we go over and we go to our all files, and then I'm going to click on this employee shared folder again, we could see that we have Jamaica and then we have the Sarasota. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share the Jamaica video. So we just need to click on it and click on shared link. Now we have a couple different options that we could do. We had set link expiration access limit, or we could require a password. If we click on the set link expiration, it will give us a date and time frame of when that would expire. If we have an access limit, we could say how many users could actually access it. The default is one, and then we could require a password. I'm gonna put in a password of test1234. After putting in the password, we're gonna press create and copy link. As well as copying the link, we could copy a QR code, download the QR code, or we could delete the link altogether. I'm gonna copy the link and then I'm gonna open it up in another tab. And you can see that it was connecting to Unified Drive and it's asking us to enter our password and that password is test1234. Once we press submit, we should be able to get that file from the Jamaica trip. As you can see, the video is playing right inside of the browser, but if we wanna download this to our desktop, we could do that as well. And we will see different things about this MP4 file. So the type, the size created on which date and then shared by and then the shared link expirations as well as the access limit which we don't have any of those set currently. I think the shared link is going to be pretty big within Unified Drive. It does make it very easy to share files. Let me know what you think about shared links in the comments below. The last thing we're going to take a look at in this video is our backup. So we have a task name and I'm going to call this backup one. We need to select which data that we want to backup and I'm just going to do all of my files and then press select. From here, we have a couple different backup options. We have our remote UNAS. If you're using a remote UNAS, then you'd want to create something like a magic site to site VPN. You could do another server or another NAS back it up to, or you could do Google Drive. First, we'll start off with Google Drive. I'm going to click on link my account, and then I'm going to click on google.com slash device. From here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this code in, and then I'm going to press continue. We now need to select which email we want to use for this to back up. I'm just going to do my primary email address, and then we need to press continue. Now it says select what unified drive backup can access. I'm going to have it see, edit, and do all of the things, and then press continue. It says success, device has been connected. So let's go back over to unified drive. And you can see that within Google Drive, the server has been connected. So let's verify that and see the file name that it created for us. All right, now within Google Drive, we can see that this unified drive UNAS Pro Mac Telecom folder has been created. If we double click in it, it's going to show us our task name. So that's really great if you want to back up to Google Drive. But how about if we want to back up to another NAS? If we want to back up to another NAS, we're going to create another task. So this task will be called backup to NAS. I'm going to select what I want to back up, which is going to be all my files again. And this time for our destination, we're going to click the SMB server. We need to put the IP address, the port, the username, and the password of that other NAS. I now have all my information inputted. Let's press connect. It says that the server has been connected. We could scroll down and we have these different rules that we could do and we need to select a destination folder. So I'll click on select destination folder. You would already see that I have a UNAS backup. So we're gonna click on that and then we're gonna press select. And then we have two different rules. So folder update, keep files on the destination server that don't match the source folder's name and then folder replacement. Replace the entire folder on the destination server with the source folder. We also could do different schedules. So we could have this occurring either on a daily basis, weekly or monthly, 
and then we could do it at specific times. I'm gonna have mine going off at 12 a.m. midnight, and then we're gonna press create task. So now we have two different tasks set up for backups. We have one going to our Google Drive, and then we have one going to a separate NAS. And that's gonna be it for my video on the new UNAS Pro. I think this is a great entry level NAS that comes in at an awesome price point of $499 USD. Unified Drive makes it easy to save files, share files, take snapshots, and back up the UNAS. A few things I would like to see, one is to force the users to change their password during the first login. I would also like to see some sort of full backup system for end user PCs and Macs. Maybe an agent running on the computer then backing up to the UNAS. I believe this is something that would be needed for business functionality. Let me know what you think about the new UNAS Pro in the comments below. If you liked my video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.